By now, you probably know who Dan Bilzerian is. Last year, he was getting a lot of attention with his failing company, Ignite, but since then, there hasn't been much news on him. While most people know the story behind Ignite, there are a lot of stories in Dan's life that have flown under the radar, and no one else has really mentioned in any of their videos. So today, we're going to be looking at some of Dan Bilzerian's craziest stories that you probably never even knew about. Number 1. The 2016 Presidential Bid For our first story, we have to go back six years to the year 2015. In June of that year, Dan decided to do something out of the ordinary. He would be throwing his name in the mix for the 2016 US presidential race and would be joining other presidential hopefuls Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Wacker Flock of Flame. Getting started, Dan decided the best way to begin his presidential campaign would be to throw a Dan Bilzerian 2016 party at the Marquee, an exclusive nightclub in New York City, with tickets starting from $40. It was definitely quite different compared to all the other candidates' opening events. At the time, Dan wasn't even old enough to technically run for president. However, he would be turning 35 at the end of the year in December and would just barely meet the age limit qualifications required. With Dan's campaign officially launched, it didn't take long for Dan to begin dropping some Bilzerium 2016 merch for his campaign. But instead of hats or traditional political signs, Dan decided to offer his supporters tank tops and tees. That is, for anyone willing to show their support for having Dan run the entire country. From there, Dan went on to launch his first official campaign video, and it was pretty much exactly how you would expect. The video featured models, wild pool parties, and even the city of Toronto as his backsplash. Dan then dropped his campaign party tour, which included stops at five clubs in four cities. Dan's campaign trail would begin with stops in Toronto and Montreal, two cities that aren't likely to have a lot of US voters before finishing off in New York City and Boston. While Dan hadn't yet made it entirely clear what his political views were, based on his past history, it's clear that he's a big supporter of guns and the Second Amendment. If Dan were to ever reach the White House, voters may be wondering what exactly the Oval Office would look like with Dan at the helm. Well, this tweet inside Dan's home office may give us a clue to what Dan may just have had in mind. For weeks on weeks, Dan would continue on his campaign trail, going from city to city and running promotional events inside nightclubs. However, by December of 2015, only a few months into his campaign, Dan had decided to drop out and announce he would be throwing his support behind the Republican wildcard candidate, Donald Trump. In marking the end of his presidential campaign, Dan posted a picture on Instagram, sitting next to Trump, with the caption, In an age of political correctness, you have to respect the people who remain unfiltered. In a more recent interview, where Dan sat down with Kevin O'Leary, when asked about where he sees himself in 20 years, Dan said the goal is to make a couple of billion from Ignite and then become President of the United States. So... While 2016 didn't end with Dan winning the US presidency, we may be in store for another Dan Bilzerian presidential campaign in the future. Number 2. A Stint in Hollywood Moving on, another area that isn't as well known to the mainstream is Dan's brief stint in Hollywood. In 2013, Dan saw his first big break when he was featured in the movie Olympus Has Fallen. Shortly thereafter, he began earning small cameo appearances in other noteworthy Hollywood movies, including The Equalizer, Lone Survivor, Extraction, and War Dogs. All of these movies were a huge success and helped Dan get his name out there. However, 
In the case of the movie Lone Survivor, things didn't go as well for Dan. The producer of Lone Survivor, Peter Berg, had set a moderately modest budget of $40 million for the film. After suffering a disastrous failure on the movie Battleship, which resulted in the film studio losing over $150 million. To finance Lone Survivor after the Battleship failure, Berg decided to take on a huge list of producers, with the only requirement that they invest $1 million into the film to get a credit. And one of those producers ended up being Dan himself. But Dan's money came with a catch. In exchange for investing $1 million into the movie, Dan wanted at least eight minutes of screen time and 80 words of dialogue in the final version of the film delivered to Universal Studios. And this is where things fell apart. After the final cut, Dan's role was reduced to less than one minute on film and just one line. And as a result, in 2014, Dan reportedly sued the producers of Lone Survivor for $1.2 million, requesting the initial $1 million plus a 20% penalty. It appeared Dan was following through with his contractual threat, given he didn't get the part he felt entitled to. Shortly after the movie's release, this all changed. Lone Survivor was a commercial success earning over $150 million in worldwide box office sales. As a result of this success, the lawsuit was dropped, and Dan would reportedly generate $1.5 million in revenue from the film's commercial success. Not too bad for a day's work. As far as Dan's fledgling acting career goes, his last appearance in a Hollywood movie was back in 2016, when he made an appearance in War Dogs. Perhaps now he has changed his focus from Hollywood towards running Ignite, while still maintaining his lavish lifestyle. We'll have to wait and see if he ever does make another cameo appearance, or if he has fully retired from Hollywood. Number 3. Navy Seal Bud's Training Perhaps the most notable story of them all involves Dan's journey training to become a US Navy SEAL. Shortly after completing school, Dan decided to follow in his father's military footsteps by joining the Navy with the end goal of moving into the SEAL Special Forces Unit. In order for anyone to become a Navy SEAL, they must complete the initial course called Basic Underwater Demolition SEALs Training, or BUDS for short. BUDS training takes place in Coronado, California at a Naval Special Warfare Training Center and usually takes 24 weeks in total. However, in total, Dan says he ended up spending 510 days there and had to go through two full hell weeks, completing the first of which with a broken leg. A hell week tends to be the defining week in Bud's training. Hell week generally consists of five and a half days of cold, wet, and brutally difficult operational training where recruits end up getting fewer than four hours of total sleep during those five days. Generally, this is where most recruits ring the bell and go home. On average, three quarters of Navy SEAL recruits don't graduate Bud's training. However, in both of his two attempts at becoming a Navy SEAL, Dan supposedly made it through Hell Week. In his first attempt, Dan claims he made it three to four weeks after Hell Week and then got rolled back and had to restart the program due to issues he faced with his supervisor. In his second attempt, Dan ultimately ended up being forced to drop out over a safety violation. According to a forum post citing what other recruits in Dan's class remember, Dan had made it to the third phase, but during a night evolution, he fell asleep in the field, and when they were recalled for inspection, he wasn't there. Afterwards, when he was finally found, he tried blaming his classmates that they didn't come wake him up, but just like that, Dan had failed his second attempt. Dan claims he was only two days away from completing Bud's training in this second attempt, but after having failed once again, he decided to drop out completely. While Dan almost completed Bud's training twice, 
Many Navy veterans have gone on to question how close Dan really came to becoming a Navy SEAL. Given that once a recruit completes Bud's training, they're still not even halfway done with their training, and must still undergo three weeks of parachute jump school, followed by 26 weeks of SEAL qualification training. It is only after this training is complete that they are recognized as a Navy SEAL. In the end, Dan never became a Navy SEAL but his attempts at becoming one makes up a big part of his life story before he found his way into the world of poker, and from there, social media. While Dan Bilzerian sure has had a crazy past, we may be in store for even more crazy stories in the future, depending on what happens with Ignite. Will Dan run again for president, or grow Ignite into a billion dollar business? Only time will tell what happens next. Thanks for watching. As always, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos just like this. Also, comment down below which story caught your attention the most. I'm curious to know. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.